So step one, what quadrant are we in? So hey guys, five, six, quadrant two. So you're gonna draw a triangle in quadrant two. Now I have a mixed together here, degrees and radians. Again, this is the one unit where you're gonna do both after this, it's gonna just be radians. Stick with what it says. So if it is in radians, stick with radians. If it's in degrees, stick with degrees. I'm trying to check to make sure you can do both. So if it's five pi over six, what's your reference angle? Pi over six, like, do you remember how it just matches? You should not ever think that. It's either pi over six, pi over four, pi over three. I just reviewed it, guys. Like, these are your only options. If you get stuck, it's one of those three, okay? What goes across from the pi over six? One half, it's the smaller side. What does that mean this other side is? Good, and then we're not in quadrant one, so something has gotta be negative. Which one gets the negative? Okay. That is the amount of work I am looking for. Do not fight me on that. I won't give it to you unless you, it's a triangle, it has three sides, okay, humor me. Then you answer the question, this says sine. Sine is what part of that? Why, which one's the Y value? One half is your answer. All right, and again, we'll just go through and do the odd ones because I put a ton on here. All right, 300 degrees. We'll stick with degrees on this one. What, what quadrant are you in for 300 degrees rotation? Four, good, draw a triangle in the fourth quadrant. Then it's what's the angle? So what's the angle, your reference angle for 300 degrees of rotation? It'll be 60. It's either 30, 45, or 60. Why is it 60? Because that's correct. 360 is the whole way around, right? 60 is the big angle. What goes across from 60? Square root of 3 over 2. That means the other side is a half. Something has to be negative, either one or the other or both. Good, your y value is negative. That is your work, okay? Then you answer it. Tangent is y over x, or opposite over adjacent, however you want to think of that. Now, you kind of need to trust the process here. It's negative square root of 3 over 2 over a half. Write that out. I get that it looks awful, but what's going to happen? Yeah. And do you think how these are all over two? That'll happen every time. Like it'll always cancel out like that. So you get negative square root of three over one, which just is negative square root of three. Good, cool. All right, uh, four pi over three, what quadrant is that one in? Third quadrant. If you go three thirds, that's one pi. So if you go four thirds, you just passed it up by a little bit. I hope this goes a little better this time. What's that reference angle? Pi over three, it's just gonna match. If I offer you a third of pi, that's a lot of pi. A third is a big amount, okay? That's the big angle. What goes across from the big angle? Square root of three over two. A lot of people will also just remember the three ones go across from each other. That means the other side is a half. Do you feel like you're writing the same thing over and over again? Isn't it great? The amount of information you have to know is very, very tiny. All right, what's negative? Both of them. That is your work. Then you will answer the question. Cosine is what part of that? X. Which one's the X value? Negative a half. Beautiful. All right. What quadrant is 45 degrees in? First, good. And again, if it's in degrees, stick with degrees. If it's in radians, stick with radians for right now. I'm just trying to make sure you can do both. That's the medium angle. What goes across from 45? Good. And what does that mean the other side is? Yeah, it's a 45, 45, 90, so they're both the same. And the good news is we're in quadrant one, so everything's positive, so that's it for your work. How do you get secant? You flip the X value. Now this one is the X value. We did one of these last time. What I try to coach everybody to do is if you flip square root of two over two, you just get square root of two. I try to get everybody to just make that leap because if you remember, I know it was two days ago. When you do that, you end up with twos all over the place. 
Um, and I don't want it to start to confuse everybody. So I try to just get everybody to remember that one. If you flip square root of two over two, it's just square root of two. I'm trying to save you some confusion there. All right, what quadrant is 150 degrees? Quadrant two. And then what is your reference angle? It's either 30, 45, or 60. 30. Because to get to 180, a 50, 150 plus 30 is 180. All right, 30 is a little slice. 30 is not very many degrees. So what goes across from that? One half is the smaller side. That means the other side, square root of three over two, something needs to be negative. Good, perfect, that is your work. Then you answer the question. Cosecant means you're going to do what? Flip the y value. Which one is the y value? One half. If you flip one half, what do you get? Two. Beautiful. How, how is this feeling? Are we okay? You're right there? I don't get much from you guys. So. All right. What quadrant is seven sixths in? Third. Good. Six sixths would be one whole pi. So seven sixths means you went a bit further. Radians are nice because it just matches. What's your reference angle? Five or six? A sixth is a tiny slice. So the small side goes across from that, which would be one half. That means the other side, square root of three over two. And then what? Both negative. Perfect. That's your work. Then you answer it. Tangent is what over what? Yeah, opposite over adjacent or y over x, if you want to start thinking of it that way. It'll be negative a half over negative square root of three over two. I get that that looks awful, but just kind of trust the process. What's going to cancel? Yeah, the twos and the negatives. All right. So what are you left with? Okay, perfect. One over square root of three. And then you rationalize that square root of three over three. Good, cool. It's about as hard as I can make it. All right, 315. What quadrant would that be in? Fourth, because if you go 360, that's the whole way around. 315 is like you didn't quite make it. What's your reference angle? We've, you're going to stick with degrees for this one. 45. Perfect. What does that mean both of the sides are? Both square root of two over two, but one of them is negative. Is it the X or the Y? Y is negative, good, this one. So that is what you need to write for full credit for your work. Then you answer it, sine is which one of those? Yeah, the Y one, the negative one. After we finish this one, don't stop listening to me because I want to go, I want to see if you can identify the other ones that are going to be like this. 360 degrees is the whole way around. It's not going to create a triangle because you land on the axes. Do you remember what we draw instead for ones like these? Draw a circle. 360 would be right here. What is that coordinate point? One zero. So that is your work if it lands on the axes. Then we're going to answer that. How do you get secant? You're going to flip x, which is 1. 1 over 1 is 1. So it's just 1. <laughs> I want to see if you can find on here any other ones that are going to be like that. One of the up, down, left, right, like compass point ones that land on the axes. Can you find another one on here that's like that? 10. Let's go back and do 10. I want to find all the ones that are like those. For 10, draw a circle. Up, down, left, or right, where's pi? Left. Left, good. I'm directionally challenged, so. All right, what is that coordinate point? Yep, negative one, zero. Cosecant means you flip the y value. Now your y value is zero, so that gives you one over zero which is undefined. You're not allowed to divide by zero. So that undefined is a valid answer. If you get zero in the denominator. Now, if you get zero in the numerator, then what? 
then it's just zero. All right, do you see another one like that? That's gonna be a circle. All right, 14, draw a circle. Up, down, left, or right, where's pi over two? Up, good. And that coordinate is zero, one. And then we're gonna do cotangent. So look up there, I have it there for right now. Cotangent is what over what? Good, so that would be zero over one, which is just zero. I don't know that there's any more like that, but check on the front. Are there any more of those like compass point ones? Did we get them all? Yeah, okay, cool, then that's good enough. Um, I'm gonna say this while I'm still recording so that everybody hears it. We will do a unit circle quiz next class. I'm just gonna hand you a blank one of those. If you want more to practice, they're back there, just take them. You have all the answers to that quiz. Like you have all the answers, but do we memorize it? No, you just count your way around. Just keep adding 30 or keep adding 45. Count one, six, two, six, three, six. And then just take all your points and reflect them. There will be at least two more unit circle quizzes throughout some point in the fourth quarter that won't be announced. It's the only pop quiz I ever give. And to be fair, you have the answer key to the quiz ahead of time, okay? So just, you have been warned and I have it on a recording that I did warn you that.